let me be clear. The Obama campaign had a staff of well over 3,000 people. We're a tremendous team and it was an incredible operation that grew so incredibly fast. It was amazing to be part of that. Right? You know, I always think back when the Obama campaign started, it was just a couple of people and then, you know, it grew like the ultimate startup where a campaign in less than 18 months brought in a billion dollars, right? It was unbelievable to see how, how fast a presidential campaign grows and how many people get part, are, become part of that movement. Um, but how, how did the candidate change? Um, well, I think Barack Obama was pretty clear about who he was in the beginning, right? He didn't have to go soul-searching what his message was. It was always clear who Barack Obama was and what he stood for. You know, I mentioned uh, that the two most critical questions any candidate, but I would argue any leader could ask himself and also has to answer are, why me and why now, right? This is absolutely critical. And I think Barack Obama knew from the very beginning why he was running for president and why this was his moment to run and address the, the, the issues the country was facing. So. Again, this was a campaign around Obama for Obama, and he was the perfect fit for that moment in time. Politics can be extremely exciting, and I understand that there's a you know, flavor about politics too when you turn on the news that there's something always happening, right? The news of the day or the hour, actually. But I think the reason why people get into politics is because they want to change things, right? Because there's something out there a moment where you're like, I don't want to sit on the sidelines anymore. For me, it was 2008 when Barack Obama addressed those pressing questions. One was the war in Iraq, um, but the climate change was always a big issue, right? And so I think everyone sort of figures out, this is my moment, this is when I need to get off the sidelines and actually join the political process. And I can only encourage everyone when that moment strikes that you become part of something that's bigger than yourself, right? And so politics is a great outlet for that. Um, on the other side, I also understand why people are reluctant to go into politics because it's overly polarized, um, you know, it's a hustle and a fight sometimes out there. Um, and sometimes it seems like the ones trying to address the problems don't fully grasp them or the way they do is not worthy of the cause or the issue itself. And so I think it's the responsibility of everyone to actually get off the couch and say, I can contribute something to something that's more important than just my business or just my well-being, but I can give something back, even though that might sound uh, you know, a little over the top. But I think we're living in absolutely critical times. And when I see young people going out on the streets all across Europe, all across the world to do the Fridays for Future marches, you know, that gives me quite a bit of hope. And it reminds me of the time when in 2008, people would just go out and canvas for Barack Obama and build a movement for change. So anytime you get a chance to actually go out and do something, you absolutely should. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, split it up between social and traditional, right? There's a time and a place for everything. I will say that, you know, we live in such a quick 24-7 news environment that it's hard to actually, you know, go design a billboard, then have it printed, then wait another couple of weeks to actually have it installed, you know, the message and the narrative has moved on. That's not saying that there's no time and space for the good old billboards, but, you know, you got to be there where the conversation is and you got to be there where the voters are. And so I would argue, you know, be there in real time. Don't be too quick, but understand where the people are and actually how you drive your own narrative. Don't just be reacting to what other people are saying, but you def define the playing field that you want to play on, get your message across. And I think you can do that most effectively by A, getting the message out through your own channels, but then also promoting it. And this is where classic media comes in as well. The most essential quality in any candidate is that candidate has to know who he or who she is and what they stand for. If you can't articulate why you're running, why this is the critical moment in time when you feel like you need to make that difference, that campaign is gonna be very long and very hard, right? So understand why you get into the politics, political process to begin with, and then be very, very disciplined in how you approach it, right? I've seen candidates who are not disciplined, who get carried off message, 
and the media environment is too quick. So be conscientious of what it is that you try to com communicate and then go out there and make that argument every single day, even if you can't hear it yourself anymore. The voters still need to hear it. So if you ask me what the, what the big difference between Europe and America is, it's funny because when I'm in Europe, people always say, like, well, what the Americans do doesn't work in Europe, right? We're just so different from the Americans, right? And I would say that, you know, it might be a different medium. It might be a different way of putting a message. But in the end, at least in politics, people will care about very basic things. They want to live a good life. They want a better life for their children uh, than for themselves. And that is the same thing in America, in Europe. It's probably the same thing in Asia and Africa and all over the place. So if candidates can address why they're running and their story of self, their personal story, how that fits into a larger narrative about the moment in time, they're going to be lost. I think the same is true in Europe and the same is going to be true in America as well. Again, data might play a different role, uh, Facebook, social media, whatever you have. Uh, there's going to be different channels, but the message is going to be the same. And it's going to be critical that you have or you have to answer those questions. Anyone who's just getting started, right? You just finished high school and you just want to get your hands dirty or you just finished college or you change jobs and all of a sudden you're like, well, everyone's on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and I just want to get started. My message would be get started, right? Don't read all the books out there. Don't plan your strategy. Don't do 50 seminars. I mean, use your brain, you know, use common sense, uh, but then go out there and ask yourself, what is it that I want to get across to people? Think about how that message needs to be framed in order to resonate with your key audience. But most importantly, go do it. Don't wait for anyone else to do it. Don't feel like you need to read everything. It's not going to get easier. So get your hands dirty and, and, and just go out there throw some punches.